What's up, Lou? <clears throat> Cockhorn <laughs> leg whore. Hey, Ma, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry oh you had to God. learn about the show. I'm sorry. Ma, stop watching right now. <laughs> what? I'm just... This This is our podcast. Mm-hmm. Our podcast where we can talk about Looney Tunes characters however we want. And I want to call him Cockhorn Leghorn. What's wrong with that? Any fun. <laughs> Skillshare, if you're watching right now, stop watching. Uh, Dollar Shave Club, <laughs> turn it off right now. <laughs> oh, dang it, I wanted to get part some of that Dollar Shave Club money. Squarespace, Squarespace, go to a different site. Welcome to Looney Duels. This is a podcast where we talk about Looney Tunes characters, their abilities, if they could kill God, maybe, <laughs> uh, if they can kill each other. Uh, it's a very scientific show, very based on logic and reasoning. And today is a very special episode because not only do we have some some heavy hitters in in, uh, in terms of uh, the tunes we're talking about, but. I've also invited my girlfriend on the podcast. Hi. So, say hi. Who who are you? Uh, What's your name? Is, my my name is Artie. Thank you for um, asking. I know you forgot. Um, <laughs> I have a very small Artie. memory. I have seen practically no original Looney Tunes shorts, um, but I'm hoping that my presence here will provide a fresh insight into who is the victor in these eight long ba- eight minute long battles. Um, mostly, I'm just here to see Falcon like on the. Hey, Luke, can we yes. rewind a bit? Are you proud of saying cockhorn lake horror in front of your girlfriend? <laughs> no, she is. <laughs> I'm pretty. Pr- I'm pretty proud. Yep. <laughs> She loves it. Look at that smile. I'm, I'm imagining <laughs> that she's smiling right now. <laughs> I can't see her. My, my face was actually stretched into a grimace. Yes. Um, but <laughs> yeah, sure. Smile, why not? Yeah. Well, so because you are such a newbie to the to the loony verse, as, as we like to call it here. <laughs> we? Uh, <laughs> yeah. The loony verse, uh, yeah, okay. You know, you've seen some of the podcast episodes. Who do you think's like, you know, really winning right now? And don't say bugs, because it's obviously bugs. Then what am I supposed to say? You could just lie. Elma? Elma? Give me a hot take. Give me a hot take. <sighs> Give me a hot take. Oh, fuck. Okay, fine. A hot take. Tweety Bird's playing the long game. It's going to come up from the behind as the victor at the end. I'm going to come up behind a Tweety Bird and kill him, but uh, that's what's, <laughs> that's what's <the> <laughs> Well, let's not waste any more time. I, you know, I just realized that on screen right now, we don't have a visual for Artie. So I'm going to draw in MS Paint a picture of Artie, and I'm just going to put it on the screen right now. And okay. you're just going to have to, you're going to have to wait and see everyone I'm else. really, I'm really excited about this. Thank you. It's let's talk really about cute. Rabbit Transit. Yeah. Rabbit Transit is another Cecil and Bug short, and I believe it's the last we're going to be seeing. And uh, what's interesting about this one is it appears to be a reboot of the Cecil and Bug cinematic universe. Um, because in the previous shorts, they kind of knew each other already. They kept kind of building on the fact they knew each other. In this one, they don't. So this is kind of a reboot of the Cecil Bugs universe. I want to come back to that at the end, Ryan, uh-huh. because I do have some very hot takes okay. about this Ooh. particular one. As, as you okay. know, as a new observer... Um, I, I do have some opinions about what went down. Okay, well, Cecil and Bugs here, they're both at, like, some sort of underground spa. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I don't really know what it is. Uh, and, they, you know, Bugs is reading the story of the tortoise and the hare, and he's like, ah, there's no way a turtle could have won that. That's stupid. But Cecil's like, ah, I, I could do it. I, I, you know, hi, I'm Cecil. I'm, I bet I could do it. Okay. And it's like, all I, right, let's do we're it. We're missing an important part that... During the scene, Cecil, uh, Cecil, sorry, Cecil, Cecil, Cecil? He's, ho- he's hooked up to some kind of grotesque machine, <laughs> <laughs> which really is just very unappealing. There's like pipes and valves. And I stuff. call this foreshadowing uh, towards a revelation <laughs> that we have about Cecil later in the short. No, exactly. That's exactly what I like in my notes. I wrote, oh my God, because of that revelation. But go on. Yeah, what's the revelation? Well, we'll get there. We'll we get gotta, to we it. gotta get there we'll first. Get to it. I want to say about this one, uh, along with this being a reboot of their story, I, I think uh, this one's interesting. I don't think Cecil is on his A game here, right? Uh, no, not at in all. In the previous shorts, he's just one-upping Bugs Bunny constantly, but in this one, they're kind of both dirty cheaters. 
<laughs> well, I mean, Cecil's always been a cheater, but he's always been, like, I don't know, subtle with it. Like, it's more about the mind game, you know? And this one, he's just very blatantly cheating yeah. at, the, at the race. Very. He, he completely casts aside his morals. I, I feel like, and we'll get there. I mean, we keep saying we get there, but I feel like Cecil only one of this sort out of tradition. They're both the bitches of this sort. <laughs> they both kind of lost in a sense. Yeah. Uh, so, wh- I think this is what y'all are leading up to, right? We get to the race, and Cecil, his shell, it's <laughs> its robotic. Yeah. It's got, like, a jet in it, and he starts, like, flying ar- across the racetrack. And it's just, he's not even trying to hide it. He's just like, yep, I have a jetpack in my shell. Here I go. He's uh, he's the newest villain in Dragon Ball Superhero. He's one of the oh, new androids. Yeah. yeah. He's an android. Yeah, so Cecil <laughs> Turtle is absolutely an all-powerful android um, in this short. Uh, let's just talk. <laughs> I think that's a part of the reboot, too. It's like he was a turtle originally. Now he's an all-powerful android robot turtle. Do you, do you think somebody, like, took him and was like, you, you are the only one who can beat Bugs Bunny. I have to, I have to enhance you somehow. I have to add on to you and, you know, spent some time in a lab with him. And this is how he came out the other side. Just not quite our Cecil, Hold on. but still Let's him. back up. Hold on. What if it was Elmer Fudd from the scientist short that did this? <gasps> it was <laughs> evil scientist Elmer. He was like, I can't beat Bugs Bunny, but you, <laughs> you can. <laughs> It's the lore. Oh my God. Elmer did this. It was all him. Are we putting Elmer Fudd in some kind of Dr. Garrow kind of situation here? He's He is, though. That's what his whole thing was in the last short. He was like, I'm going to make something evil and fucked up. And he, he got he did this. He absolutely did this. There's no way that Cecil did this on his yeah, own. Cecil's, he wouldn't have thought Cecil's of it. Cecil's not smart enough to build an invention. He's just a stupid, tricking turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I also noticed the lack of, like... Cecil's crew yeah. and Bugs's crew, for that matter, which they both had in, in the other shorts. There's just it's a very empty. Oh well, you know, short. it's like a reboot. You know, when you when you do a reboot, you kind of just want to get the basic, most important characters in. You know, you don't need that. You <laughs> right. can't get the extended universe quite as yeah. We're starting over at like what what these were all about originally. Bug Bunny and Cecil Turtle. Now I will note that the the thing that makes the this short kind of weird compared to the other two is Bugs kind of gets over it in the middle of the short like he stops you know kind of freaking out about it which is usually his thing with cecil is that he he gets so like hot-headed about it that he ends up you know spelling out his own demise but he's actually able to like successfully trick cecil a few times he even gives him a little kissy yeah there's a bug bunny kiss in this one which absolutely incenses him he is furious (laughs) oh yeah cecil's homophobic cecil is homophobic to his core cecil uh put that down first homophobic looney tune elmer fudd would see this guy be like (laughs) wow don't even i'm homophobic (laughs) <laughs> I met the boy. He is also uh, he he also the way he beats Bugs Money at the end is the most fucking Blue Lives Matter ass no, okay. turtle. <laughs> Get right beside on Cecil, homophobic, narc, pig lover, <laughs> and not Porky. Not Porky. So <laughs> so Bugs is going real fast, and he wins the race. Like. No question, he finally wins the race. And Cecil's like, yeah, how fast were you going again? And he's like, ah, easily a hundred. He yells it. And then he's like, all right, get him, boys. And the police show up and take Bugs Bunny to jail. Can you be arrested for running too fast? I don't think so. Maybe? I don't know. No, because you're not a vehicle. <laughs> but you could still run into somebody and hit them and it'd hurt probably really bad. Well, he did He did actually do that in this episode. He ran into the tree and died. No, that's right. That. <laughs> uh, we, we need to talk, along with Bugs Bunny's new speed stat we just learned about, he can run 100 miles per hour. Uh, make sure you remember that. Uh, Bugs Bunny can also ascend his spirit. Um, <laughs> a lot to take in with that one. Yeah, he hits a tree and his like soul comes out and he starts slapping his body. He's like, wake up, wake up, get back in the race. So that's a that's a cool power, I think. So he's not so helpless when he's unconscious. <laughs> he's got he's got a second life. He's got control over his spirit in the astral plane, which which is definitely something that he needed, I think. <laughs> I, the thing to note is just B- Bugs Bunny only dies if he wants to. <laughs> when he decides to, when he's like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my time's up, Doc. <laughs> so technically a Cecil win, but 
a, a dirty win. A dirty, dirty win. My my hot opinion for this um for this episode, what I wrote was Cecil wins, but he doesn't deserve it because he planted the book in the spa. Oh, that's my opinion. You think he planted the book? I think he did that just because he's a day bitch and wanted to. <laughs> So he wanted to rile Bugs up, so he put that book there. Bugs is like, I'll do a little light reading while I'm having my yeah. little spa day. And Otherwise, he... why else would Bugs Bunny of all people bring a book about fairy tales to a spa day? I just don't believe it. <laughs> what would he bring? I don't know. iPod? Some tunes? <laughs> <laughs> iPod? I'm listening to True Crime, Dak. <laughs> yeah, he's got his well... podcasts. Dirty win goes to Cecil. Let's yeah, a move dirty on. homophobic blue lives matter win for Cecil. <laughs> so slick hair is our next short, and and we're it's a Elmer and Bugs one, but I'm actually I, I really like this one a lot. One because we're not in the forest for once; we're in a restaurant, and so it's you know a change of scenery. But also there's a bunch of like human characters that are supposed to be like celebrity cameos, but they're all from like the 19. 19- 50s or 40s or whatever so i don't, I don't know who the fuck any of these people are. they were just people this was a great short for a zoomer who can only understand things if they're shrek references <laughs> i think the yes, only exactly. cameo i understood in this was carmen miranda and that was it oh Nothing yeah else. she was there <laughs> but elmer is a waiter and i you know what i'm gonna be honest i think this is a, a a job that really fits him because he's kind of a doormat. Yeah, <laughs> he kind of lets people walk all over him, you know. No, I, I even wrote Elmer's doing his best as a waiter. He was dr- really, really doing a, a good job. I think at the beginning, I don't think he, you know, he was in over his head. Like he was doing fine. Yeah, this guy wants a rabbit. You gotta have the rabbit, or else, you know, he's this guy, get you. M- Mr. Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Yeah, real quick, speaking of Humphrey Bogart, I we need to talk about something real quick. Uh, Elmer Fudd, standing next yeah. to these humans. So, let's talk about something real fast. In Super Mario Brothers, the, the universe, Mario is considered a human, but the, but the human people in New Donk City are New Donkers. Um, right. Do you think in Looney Tunes is a similar rule? Uh, Elmer Fudd is a human being, but there's a separate species like of celebrities, and celebrities are their own species of real-looking people. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I'd I think agree so with that. too. They're, that's why he's a he's a waiter, you know. He's subservient he's a, <laughs> to these the superiors. You, you, you really, we're really <laughs> creating a lot of insane lore for Looney yeah. Tunes people. Yeah. I think the Looney Tunes versus is not, you know, it's it's still got some time to to grow and and you know progress in society. You know? That would kind of add to, like, maybe why Elber is so desperate all the time. It's just he's looked down upon because he's not a celebrity species. He's a, he's a human species. and that, you Yeah, know, he's just a regular guy. <laughs> yeah. Regu- regu- it's just, you know, it's a lot like real life, how celebrities are treated like gods. And us regular folk down here on Elmer's level, what are we? <laughs> just <laughs> trying to, to catch wabbits. Just trying to catch wabbits. <laughs> it's all a metaphor. It's beautiful. Get Mr. Humphrey Bogart, his wabbit. <laughs> Well, you know, Bugs is there too. <laughs> oh yeah, why wouldn't he be? <laughs> yeah, he and you know he he you know foils around with 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 uh, Elmer. You know, Elmer's trying to get him to cook him up. He keeps trying to chop him in half. <laughs> it's it's lots of fun. Uh, Bugs dances at one point. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, yeah, hold, Bugs' body doesn't just dance. He fucks it up. <laughs> he really does. I think um what what I wrote was that. Uh, Bugs Bunny does a sick dance sequence, perhaps the new Fortnite dance, which I think it should be, quite honestly. You know, I'm surprised it's not. Maybe it'll be in multiverses. Oh my god, <laughs> he's, gotta, he's gotta do this dance in multiverses. Oh my god. <laughs> he like puts a hand to his chest, and he holds the other up, and he does like a little shuffle. It's the best thing ever. A little shimmy. <laughs> he does like the dance from like a Yosemite Sam short already. I mean, there's no stopping him from doing this one too. <laughs> Oh man, we haven't even got to Yosemite, have we? No, we're still far away from that little man. I can't wait. I love Yosemite Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's funny. Uh, well, uh, at the end, you know, Elmer can't kill bugs, and the guy's like, ah, well, I guess my, my baby, my girlfriend, she was not going to have her rabbit, and bugs, upon hearing that he was, I guess, to be eaten by a, a beautiful, beautiful woman, <laughs> he just loses his mind. And he- <laughs> Starts wolf whistling and throws himself on the plate. It's 
he turns he kind of turns into a little bit of an animal he, he goes he goes feral yeah <laughs> that's the word i'm looking for he goes absolutely feral i, I cannot stress this enough He's insane. Like, he's going... <laughs> <laughs> he's just crazy about this woman. You know my guess. I'm, I mean, what do you even say to this ending? Is it an Elmer win? He got the rabbit, I guess. Okay. Or is it not? So, I think m- my whole opinion of this um, is that uh, Humphrey Bogart and his date... This is this is an in-depth law. I've really analysed this. Henry Bogart on his date are paying six hundred dollars. We miss this. They are paying six hundred dollars for mm-hmm. a meal, and at the end, like Humphrey Bogart sells on getting just a ham sandwich. Um, <laughs> so I think really the restaurant wins because whatever the yeah. fuck they were charging, they're not getting their money's worth. Um, I I would I would I would say Bugs wins because uh you know he he might get a little sun but you might also get eaten but he seems up for any of it so I think I think Bugs victory and this is determined if Bugs Bunny is simply just into being eaten by a beautiful woman and I think he might be not mine I think that's the revelation of this of this show is that he kind of might be well how about this let me let me paint a scenario for y'all so. Bugs Bunny throws himself on the plate, starts acting like a fool, and then, you know, Humphrey Bogart and his date are like, you know what? This guy's kind of funny. So they invite him to, to dine with them, and they have, you know, Elmer bring out a meal for them. And it's their a perfectly pleasant... Yeah, their ham sandwiches. It's a perfectly pleasant meal, and they tip Elmer well, and then they all go about their day. And you know what? Everybody wins at that point. I yeah, don't that think happen. they'd... I don't <laughs> think they'd tip Elmer, because Elmer did pie Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> Love him ring pie. <laughs> he did. He did slap a slap a like a coconut cream pie in his face. But he didn't mean to. And you know what? He didn't seem that mad about. It. <laughs> you know, he didn't seem that mad. But you know, management's probably not going to be happy about it. They're probably going to call him up on it. You know what? I don't think there's any way Elmer wanted this because he probably got fired after this short. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> oh, but he was doing so well. He he probably oh, he's probably making bank on tips. Are you kidding me? Oh, poor Elmer. <laughs> so you, as long as we assume Bugs Bunny loves to get eaten by <laughs> beautiful women, I think he won. Good on Bugs. Well, it's finally time to do what we came here to do. We're talking about the debut short of uh, not only Foghorn Leghorn but also Henry Chicken Hawk. And Barnyard Dog. That's three hey, new it. ones. Right rewind there. It. What? Yep. Calm the name. Calm the name. You gotta stick to it. And you said this you wanted is to. De- debut episode of not only Henry Chicken Hawk, Barnyard Dog, and also uh, Cockhorn Leg Horn. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We did it. So this is a star studded one. This was the uh, the Bayer kind of episode for him, so he could have been Cockhorn Leg Horn. Yeah, this is that's what the beta version of him is called. Yeah. I feel like we've been watching a lot of Bugs and Elmer lately with a few daffies sprinkled in. It's good to be it's good to have reached a new character, I wanna say. Yeah, I think so too. Ignoring Tweety Bird last episode. I don't care about Tweety Bird. It's good to have reached a character I like. <laughs> yeah, th- this is a this is a new dynamic for us to take in because there is something going on between Foghorn Leghorn and the Barnyard Dog. <laughs> <laughs> something evil, I think. There's a lot of unspoken history between these two characters. This is, I I think this is probably the two Looney Tunes characters we've seen so far who hate each other the most. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> so this short starts, it's a, it's a Henry, most of these Foghorn ones, if they're not about Foghorn and Henry's in them, they usually like are mostly about Henry Hawk. Uh, Chicken Hawk, uh, mostly from his perspective, he's being told by his parents, "Oh, you're a Chicken Hawk. But you know, you you're craving to eat chicken." And Henry doesn't know what a chicken is, but he's got he's got to get one in his belly. So he fucking jumps out the window and he can't fly. So he just falls on the ground. Yeah. So Chicken Hawk cannot fly. You write that in your stats. He's too much of a baby, but don't let that fool you because he is very strong. And powerful. <laughs> he is exceptionally powerful. He's kind of like Bam Bam from Flintstones. He's like a little yeah. baby with mighty power. A little bit yes. of Bam Bam if Bam Bam was like a cannibal, I suppose. <laughs> well, I think it's not. I think we shouldn't assume he's not. <laughs> yeah, you know, know. you're right. You're right. You're right. I don't know that. So Falkhorn and Barnyard Dog, they're just, I guess their daily life is just trying to kill each other or hurt each other very badly Barnyard Dog keeps forgetting that he's on a tether, so he'll chase after Foghorn, get as far as he can, and then get choked (laughs) 
didn't fall. And that's uh, that's just their game every day, I guess. Yeah, Falkhorn's like intro scene to us, like the first time we ever see this man in like the history of television. He is like just absolutely tormenting Barnyard Dog and just giving him the spanking of his life, which I think is a very <laughs> bold move. Oh, I, can, I cannot stress this enough. Right after the intro with Henry Hawk, it smash cuts, like smash cuts to Barnyard Dog slamming a watermelon on popcorn. And he just goes, every day with this. And then he just starts wailing on him. This happens like in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, they're very, they don't waste time, these two. They, they're not trying to do like clever tricks or anything. They are just trying to cause each other the most physical pain you can cause another person as fast as possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Henry Chicken Hawk comes in and he's like, oh, I'm here to eat a chicken. But Foghorn, I, he's so quick with this. He doesn't even hesitate. He's like, oh, I'm not a chicken. That guy's a chicken, though. Go get that guy. Let me, let me help you out with that. <laughs> he just immediately points him in in barnyard dog's direction so of course you know henry's gonna want to get a get a little piece of that dog you know he's gonna put his little beak on his tail maybe get a little bite you know what i'm saying <laughs> this is like a, a barnyard dog torture episode i think <laughs> i think that's that's gonna be most of the episodes containing barnyard dog to be quite honest <laughs> a feeling i you know i love a looney tunes dog but barnyard dog is a little different because He's got this violence to him. He's got this uh -huh. anger that I, I don't appreciate. He's got this deep, like, um, unseated rage that <laughs> he just has to express. But sadly yes. tethered to his dog house. Let's be fair here. If I was Bonyard Dog and I lived with Foghorn Leghorn, <laughs> I think I'd become what he became too. <laughs> well, now, who do you think started it? Look at Foghorn Leghorn. He absolutely started it. <laughs> What makes you say that? Look, just look at him. Just everything about <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn. He absolutely, he's such a bitch. He absolutely started it. <laughs> yeah, no, he did. So they, they fight a bit of her, you know, who's a chicken, who's not. Uh, eventually, you know, Henry's got had enough of it. So he unties Barnyard Dog from his, uh, his dog house. And Barnyard Dog just starts mauling <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn. He just is trying to actually kill him. And their fight leads them into the horse stall. And so the horse gets annoyed, like, kicks them out. Barnyard Dog and Foghorn Leghorn stand up, look at each other, shake hands. Foghorn <laughs> opens the door and they both walk in to beat the shit <laughs> Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they, they team up to, to kill this horse. <laughs> and then in an immense display of power, you need to write this down, everyone at home. Uh, ch chicken Hawk has immense power. Um, he beats the shit out of all three of them and just takes them all home. Uh, the horse and Barnyard Dog just look kind of more annoyed with it, but Foghorn is wailing and crying. <laughs> he is dragging. He does not want to go. Yeah, I think he's he's an actual chicken, though. Yeah, he's he's screaming for his life. He's he's <laughs> He doesn't want to die in that moment. So what have we learned of here about these guys? Uh, so Foghorn Lakehorn is very loud in this shirt also. I just want to say, this is, this is like his original voice where he's like, BOY! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's kind of screaming the entire short. He kind of is. I've, we've learned that Henry Hawk is foolish but powerful. He does not actually care about anything. Uh, he just wants to eat something. Uh, and you can trick him all you want, but after it gets on for too long, he's just gonna kill you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at some point, he he get, has enough of the gag, and He's like two inches tall. He's so tiny, which I need to talk about the scale of the characters here too. Because when you think of Foghorn Leghorn, you think that's one like big motherfucker, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, in this short, the scaling is so weird on these characters because he's about the size of Barnyard Dog, maybe a little smaller in some shots. And if, but when they get to the horse, the horse is like gigantic compared to them. It's weird. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of weird to see like a small foghorn, like actual chicken sized foghorn. <laughs> Well, you know, Foghorn's only one of these characters in the short and space jam, too, so take note of that. No, is, <laughs> isn't Barnyard Dog around? Maybe he makes a cameo during the one scene anyone who isn't one of the main Looney Tunes makes a cameo in. Uh, he might be on that rocket ship at one point, uh, but he's not, he doesn't <laughs> play basketball. He doesn't, he doesn't, he isn't on Game of Thrones dragon or, <laughs> or like, a gossamer, he's the bigger upper or whatever. <laughs> so he was in, he was in the first one, though, right? Was he? I don't remember. 
I don't care. He probably was. I think we'll need to rewatch Space Jam two as a like research endeavor at some point. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have to watch Space Jam and Space Jam two and Looney Tunes back in action. Ooh, yeah. I'm excited about one of those. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna make a stance right now. Uh, my stance on this short: uh, Henry Hawk one, Chicken Hawk one for sure. Oh yeah. Oh I yeah. Think, Falcon I think dies. the horse. I think the horse and barnyard dog are neutral. Because I think the ending of the short just kind of implies they're going to rat out Foghorn. Like, he's the chicken. Um, <laughs> Foghorn lost. He's the absolute loser of this short. He's getting roasted tonight. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised he lives for the next one, to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah, there, there's going to be a, a reoccurring theme with pretty much any short that involves Henry Chicken Hawk, which is that he just cannot figure out what a chicken is, and, he's, and he will not be told otherwise. So... Yeah, that's our conclusion there, but our next one is Crowing Pains. And this one, not only does it have Cockhorn, Leghorn, Barnyard Dog, Henry, it's also got Sylvester the Cat? What? what? <laughs> Crazy, oh my god! What? What? I'm glad Sylvester's <laughs> finally away from that freak little Tweety bird. I don't know, is he in, is he in a much better situation here at all? <laughs> he seems He's angry. Not, yeah, He's he not just... next to Tweety. He keeps being tormented by these little birds, which I don't think is it. This isn't an improvement for Sylvester. He's just kind of gone sideways. <laughs> uh, he is very violent in this one. Uh, as the start of the short, he tries to murder and hang barnyard dog. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. really gruesome. That was like barnyard dog. <laughs> really awful. He dies. And like he's like trying to hit him with an axe, and Foghorn like steals the axe. At like it's fucking three stooges over here these three guys are just fucking around with each other and it's everyone's get, getting hurt it's I, f- I feel like i feel like in that moment like barnyard dog is like hanging from a tree branch like in like a really grotesque image because he's forgotten that he's again tied to the tether um and sylvester has an axe and is about to swing and presumably decapitate barnyard dog but foghorn leghorn steps in removes the axe head and berates Sylvester for trying to kill him. So I think I think Foghorn Leghorn is is just trying to prolong Barnyard Dog's torment. <laughs> I think he wants to keep him alive. Yeah, so I I don't think he's doing this for Barnyard Dog. He either wants to he either wants the hanging to go on even longer or he just wants to be the one who kills Barnyard Dog <laughs> by his own yeah. hands. He wants to be in control of that. He he starts doing. We start to see some foghornisms here, where you know lots of I says and you know that's a joke. Blew right by you. Just missed it. You know to Sylvester. He keeps hitting him on, talking over him. So you get this. Foghorn's whole shtick is that he talks too much and he's like an overconfident jerkwad, and mm. you, you kind of love him for it. And you also kind of hate him. <laughs> Sylvester hates him. Sylvester fucking hates him. He fucking knocks him on the head with the with yeah. the thing that had the axe on it. Yeah, shut up. So here comes Henry, Chicken Hawk. And what's he looking for? Of course, a chicken. So Foghorn, presumably pissed off that Sylvester just hit him, is like, hey, wait, I'm not a chicken. That's a chicken. It's that one, actually. So, of course, you know, he wants to help him out. So he pulls out one of his many Foghorn gadgets. You know, classic yeah. Foghorn oh. gadgets. <laughs> Pulls out his iconic mini A capsule machine. Yeah, yeah, that he just has on hand for this yeah. specific purpose. He was waiting for an opportunity. His literal Dr. Eggman, like, enemy machine. <laughs> yeah, he puts Henry in this little, like, egg with, like, a little window, like, fake egg with a window, and he's got leg holes, and he puts it under Sylvester, and Sylvester thinks that he laid it. It's his baby. He's so happy to be a mother, and I'm so happy for him. He seemed, like, genuinely, like very very pleased he was like i'm a mother i'm a mother and i'm like you're a mother <laughs> i'm glad he is experiencing that joy it was <laughs> kind of beautiful honestly it was beautiful ryan do you think that sylvester has like a natural motherly instinct in him i think it's there somewhere it just needs to be like let out you know yeah, he needs to be taken away from all the all the war and crime and fighting <laughs> in the world. Like this, all the things creating the rage within Sylvester that makes him the violent person he is right now. I think when he's taken away, when he like, gives birth finally, or like, I think that's gonna humble him, and he's gonna be like, "My life is all about you now." When he gets his baby, <laughs> and it's gonna be beautiful. Wait, it's gonna happen that... in Prince Tweety. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> 
so he he kind of realizes oh wait i didn't lay this egg and he keeps trying to get away from it but Falkworth's like egging henry on he's like get him go get him what the fuck go get him so henry's running after him like tackling him and sylvester at one point like tries to kill the egg he's like breathing really heavily like about to smash it (laughs) <laughs> and then Henry just goes, oh, wait! And this breaks, like, Sylvester, and he just starts, like, pulling on his tail, like, retracting his head in. Yeah, he kind of goes a little cuckoo. Yeah. So for a bit. Does, it's a Sylvester, at this point, say that Barnyard Dog is a chicken? Or how does Barnyard Dog get in the mix? Because he's definitely around. I... I think he. I think Sylvester calls out uh, Foghorn first, and then Foghorn calls out Barnyard Dog, and then they all start fighting. Oh, that's yeah. right. They kind of get into a like a, a argument. They're all pointing at each other and calling each other a chicken. To which Henry's like, "Okay, I'm the. I'm. I'm. The, I've hit my limit. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We're gonna find out." So his idea is that when the sun comes up, a rooster has to crow. So they're going to wait till the sun. They're going to stand perfectly still in this beautiful silhouette. <laughs> it's a very romantic little scene, like a little <laughs> vignette. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. And they're going to see who's going to, who's going to crow. And who crows? It's uh, Sylvester. Yeah. <laughs> because Foghorn has purchased a book called How to Be a Ventriloquist. <laughs> and he is <laughs> secretly crowing out the side of his mouth while Sylvester's mouth is open and oh god Henry's going to take him home and poke him alive <laughs> Barnyard Dog just kind of walks away yeah Barnyard Dog he like looks at Sylvester like kind of astonished that he's crowing puts a hand over his head shakes it and then walks away <laughs> like I can't help you I'm out of here I have nothing to do with this <laughs> Uh, an important thing we learned with this short, I think we kind of skipped over, is God does hate Foghorn Lakehorn. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> he says, if I'm lying, may thunder strike me, and then the thunder strikes. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, uh, let me put it another way. <laughs> yeah. So, Foghorn is godless. He He's a godless entity of chaos in this episode, I think. Um, because that was his only purpose. Like he 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 gaslit Henry again into thinking someone something else was a chicken. He didn't. You know, he could have just kept saying Barnyard Dog was a chicken, but he he, ch- he changed directions. Um, and he just he he just absolutely wants to cause the most mayhem possible. And we love him for it, mm-hmm. <laughs> don't we? We? D- we do. We do. We we love and appreciate him. For that exclusively. I'm going to say it's a neutral for Barnyard Dog because he didn't have anything to do with nothing. Um, it's a lose for Silver. I'm going to call mm-hmm. it a win for both Foghorn and Henry. Because Henry Henry yeah. got something to eat. And Foghorn caused it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Foghorn did the final trick, so he tapped the final him. blow. <laughs> I agree with that. The final goof and gag. All right. Well, uh. You know, before we before we get the YouTube questions real quick, uh, we're, I don't know if we'll ever get to the Looney Tunes show, but while we're on Chicken Hawk, uh, I just want to bring up, uh, there's some songs in the <laughs> Looney Tunes show, um, and I just want to say they're not a lot of them aren't very good, like eighty percent of them aren't very good, um, but the one with Chicken Hawk might be the worst. I think the one where he raps about one. Oh yeah, I remember that one. I try not to. It's like <laughs> I want some chicken, yeah, chicken, chicken, and then. Barnyard dog with a <laughs> it's, it's the worst song of that show. We yeah. so while, while we're on the subject of the Looney Tunes show, we have to talk about that a little, just a tiny bit, you know, while we're here. Yeah. So okay. in the Looney Tunes mm-hmm. show, which if you've not somehow not familiar, it's like basically a sitcom with Looney Tunes character. Bugs Bunny and Daffy are roommates. And I always find it amusing how they've kind of littered the Looney Tunes characters throughout the throughout the world. Like Granny is a neighbor, the mm-hmm. witch and uh, Gossamer are a neighbor, Yosemite Sam's a neighbor. You got like Lola Bunny's there. You got they made a girlfriend for Daffy. You know they got uh, you know they got st- other stuff going. Uh, Mac and Tosh are in every episode <laughs> of the show. Mac and Tosh, the Goofy Gophers, which we'll get to them. Are, Porky's like, like the ma- but Porky's like the councilman. Or something. Yeah. He, well, he's like he's like the the normal guy. He's like yeah. he's an accountant, and he you know is their friend, but he like lives on the other side of town. Well, so you might be wondering where have they fit Mr. Foghorn Leghorn 
into this world. Well, they have decided to make him an eccentric billionaire who owns like a <laughs> mega corporation and does like the just whatever he wants because he's ridiculously wealthy. An eccentric billionaire playboy. Yeah, let's just put it that way. Who like who takes Daffy of all people under his wing and is like completely smitten with him. <laughs> I was going to say, he makes all his business choices based on whatever Daffy says. Which is really funny, because I don't know if they really interact much in the classic shorts. I don't think they do ever. Which, which I think is, like, funny to think about. Like, if Foghorn Leghorn met Daffy Duck, he would find him so ridiculous and, like, kind of charming that he kind of just is like, you know what? I like you, kid. Like, let's, let's, you, what do you want to do? You want to <laughs> jump off a cliff? Sure, let's go. I have the money for it. Let's do it. All right, uh, I read. Uh, I got some YouTube comments here, real quick. Do you want to? you want to look at them? Well, there's a lot of questions about faith and God. Okay, um, we really. You know what? We really set ourselves up for that one. Uh, here's a question from Gloomy. Do you think Tweety believes in faith, or do you think he's a sinner? Oh, he's a sinner. I think that he hides behind some sort of religion. You know, he's like, oh, I, you know, I'm I'm totally Catholic. I you know I go to <laughs> mass every Wednesday, but he like it's just a it's just a farce. It's just so that he can, you know, pretend to be an angel, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, I think he goes to all, like, the church meetings. He goes to, like, all the, like, the, the Sunday brunches, like, the barbecues. Like, oh, I just love God. And then he goes home and, like, commits the blood <laughs> in the and he fucks the police. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, here's a question from Connie Strike. Do you think Bug Bunny could defeat the beloved Looney Tunes character, God? <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Well, is God and Bugs Bunny, are they enemies or neutral terms? Well, considering God was trying to help Elmer Fudd kill Bug Bunny, I mean, what is there to say? That's a tough one, because, I mean, we we haven't even talked, you know, we didn't talk about God's power level. We should have. He's technically a Looney Tunes character <laughs> yeah. now. We, did, we didn't talk about his abilities. You know, I think that they are on two different planes, right? Like, they can't interact. Well, God did strike down Falcon Leghorn. So, <laughs> so he clearly has some, like, active role there, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe he could, maybe God could smite bugs, yeah. but chooses not to for some reason. Maybe he is secretly amused by Bugs' antics, and he's just kind of wanting to see how far he's going to go. <laughs> How far will this go? All right, I got one more question here from uh, Sleepy Nook. Uh, I think this is a question aimed at me specifically, I'm going to be honest. Uh, but you can all can answer if you want to, too. What if Tweety perishes? What if one day Tweety is relaxing in the Warner Bros. water tower and it fell over? How would you feel? Uh, nothing. <laughs> you know, if as long as we're talking about Tweety Bird perishing, I had a thought. I thought to myself, you know... Tweety Bird and Henry Chicken Hawk, they're both kind of the same size. I think if Henry Chicken Hawk was allowed within two feet of Tweety Bird, he would eat him. Yeah. <laughs> Easily. Like, he would just grab him and eat him like a yeah. snack. Like, he wouldn't wouldn't think twice. Sylvester could be like, Thwear are my manners. Tweety, <laughs> meet Chicken Hawk. Where are my manners? Sonic, meet knuckles <laughs> <laughs> be epic it'd be so cool if they met because tweety bird would die i i, I think yeah. it's funny to imply that the various looney tunes characters just go around like taking advantage of henry chicken Hort's ignorance about what chicken is so sylvester's <laughs> just like i'll show you a chicken <laughs> <laughs> that that would be a really interesting like short is just all the Looney Tunes characters using like Chicken Hawk for their own advantage like their own sick game. Yeah, because Henry Chicken Hawk like we didn't even talk about how he lifted the entirety of of dog Barnyard Dog's like house and with Barnyard Dog in it and like was carrying it like, across at the like fifty field. miles like, he's an so hour. Small. As well. it was going right, he fast. was so powerful and fast. <laughs> he's he's kind of scary. And no wonder Foghorn was screaming for his fucking life. <laughs> It's gonna be really interesting when we do matchups at some point, and we like talk about Chicken Hawk against all the other Looney Tunes. Oh God, that's gonna be Chicken a hard Hawk's one. Chicken Hawk's gonna be the Goku uh. of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a very exciting episode. Uh, we got to talk about Foghorn Leghorn. No, say his I name love. correctly. 
Yeah, you didn't say it right. Sorry, cutting your cameras again. That's my powerful. <laughs> you sound ashamed of it now. Uh, <laughs> you were so confident about it at the beginning. It was like, <laughs> stick by your guns, babe, honestly. Sorry. God. Cockhorn leg whore, okay? There we go. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, thank you for joining us, Artie. It was a pleasure to have you on. Where can thank people you find me. you? Um. Oh, God. Oh, God, you're going to make me spell out my my twitter handle yeah you, uh, you, you changed it recently <laughs> i did you can find me at arty metropia on twitter and tumblr uh that's a-r-t-y m-e-t-i-o-p-i-a my pinned tweet currently is a picture of a foghorn leghorn t-shirt of him having a great time in the sun which lou <laughs> currently right. owns yeah i own that um... shirt. That's, my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you can find me for more foghorn leghorn talk thank you yeah, Artie draws real good. Um, she's also done some professional work on a video game. That shall not be named. Called no, Redacted. Right. Looney, Looney called Redacted 2. Game Arsenal for Nintendo Wii. <laughs> called Redacted 2. So you'll have to, you know what, if you want to know, just do some digging. Just really try to no, like, you know. Don't. It's Dota you know, 2, don't do digging. Artie actually made Looney Tunes World of Mayhem on iOS devices. Yeah, that's a better answer than Dota 2. <laughs> yeah, I wish I wish that was my work history. <laughs> Alright, well, catch y'all later. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Bye-bye.